Hey guys, uh, Sean Holster here with Off the Cuff, and I'm making a video for Survivors Winner Winners at War because I haven't in a really really long time. Uh, I didn't mean to just stop making videos, uh, weekly videos for the show. Uh, just understand that I am a stay-at-home dad, and I do a lot of stuff around here. A lot of stuff around the house, and I kind of just get tired out uh, at the end of a day. Every day is a long day uh, for me, and I, I love it, but it's pretty tiring. So sometimes I'm just out of breath at the end of the night. Um, also, another thing that I do is uh, I run a website called youmeandmovies.com. Um, I'm kind of just a big TV and movie person uh, in general. And I've been writing down my thoughts on movies since 2013. Um, so if you go to www.youmeandmovies.com, um, you can find my writings on that subject. Uh, there's also a link in my uh, YouTube homepage. Um, so yeah, I've been a little bit tardy making weekly videos on Survivor Winners at War. So today I'm just going to make a special, um, kind of a little special video um, before the finale tomorrow. We have finally arrived at the finale, and we are down to Ben, Tony, Denise, Sarah, uh, oh gosh, now I can't, uh, who else is in there? Uh, Michelle, and whoever comes back from the edge of extinction. Who do you think will come back from the edge of extinction? Well, to, the purpose of this video tonight is to kind of boil down uh, who might make it back and who might end up in the top three. Um, you might also be noticing that my uh, video isn't going crazy right now. Uh, I recently, last Christmas, I got a uh, selfie stick that also has a built-in tripod, so I have somewhere to set my phone while I'm making this video for you. Uh, so that's nice. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about the finale tomorrow, because it's already here, and uh, we'll kind of narrow down um, who might be making the finals, and who might come back from Edge of Extinction. Um, if you you've been watching Survivor for a really long time, like I have. I've been a fan of this show since I was in fifth grade. Uh, I started watching at, um, I started watching, uh, Survivor the Australian Outback when I was in fifth grade. I had missed Borneo, I missed the first season, I didn't, I jumped on the train late, I'll admit that, but I had a French teacher who was obsessed with the show, and t listening to my peers at the time talk about the show, I was like, I, I gotta, I'm a slave to trends, I gotta find out what everyone's talking about. And so I jumped in at Survivor Australian Outback, and I, the rest is history. I've been watching the show pretty much ever since. And any, any season that I missed between fifth grade and um, when I really started getting hardcore into it again in college, I basically caught up on the CBS website, or I caught up on DVD. Um, I've got pretty much every old school season on DVD downstairs. And thanks to the CBS All Access app, I have access to every single season. Uh, so I've been watching the show for a really long time, and you kind of pick up on trends um, in the editing. And you might hear a lot of diehard fans talk about the winner's edit. Now, we know that the typical season of Survivor lasts 39 days. And after 39 days worth of footage, it's the job of CBS to take that 39 hours, not 39 hours, 39 days worth of footage and basically tell a story. I mean, the winner on some level has to make some sort of sense. Otherwise, fans would probably not like the show, and it probably wouldn't have lasted 20 years. Um, so yeah, the, you know, some people, there's always a little bit of, uh, kind of uncertainty and maybe some skeptical 
feelings towards reality TV, um, you know, how much reality TV is actually reality. Um, but, you know, Survivor is a reality competition, so they don't just decide someone's going to win the million dollars. Um, it is a competition, but, you know, they do take those 39 days worth of footage and they tell a story about it. That's what ends up being the season that we enjoy. Um, so, after watching a while, you do kind of pick up on what's called a winner's edit. And you can, at the very least, um, kind of figure out who will, at the very least, make the final three. And if you've really been paying attention, editing has really been nice to Tony Vlachos. Um, it, it, Tony's really been a character this season. He's really been in the forefront this season. His journey, um, has been a main topic this season. So I'm pretty, if I had to put money on it, I think Tony makes final three. Um, you know, they, they put a lot of emphasis on him winning his, um, you know, his first ever immunity challenges and, um, a lot of how his story goes into who gets voted off each week. So I, I'm going to say Tony makes final three. Um, another person that I think will make final three tomorrow is Michelle, because they have been beating it over our heads about how she didn't deserve to win co -op. And, um, you know, I, I kind of understand that she wasn't a popular winner at the time, no offense to Michelle, but I was rooting for Aubrey that season, um, and I was a little flabbergasted that Michelle ended up did win, but that's in the past. She's here, and she's done a whole lot better than I thought that she would playing with all winners. Um, I guess there was a part of me that thought that, you know, she might slip through the cracks just because uh, she's not as flashy as the Robs and the Tonys and the Jeremys and the other dangerous people out there. So I thought maybe she'd slip through the cracks, but they are putting a lot of emphasis on her not deserving her first win. So I think right there, that's a clue that she also makes top three. Um, and, you know, this season has also put a lot of emphasis on the relationship between Tony and Sarah. They really connected again, you know, they played with each other the first time, Tony backstabbed her, uh, she came back in Game Changers and won, um, so, and, you know, they reconnected, obviously they've still remained friends outside the game, uh, they haven't been shy about that, um, in interviews and such, um, and so, like I said, they reconnected, and they've, they've been inseparable, you know, like Tom and Ian back in Survivor Palau and JT and Steven back in Survivor Token Machines, you know, like I said, they've been inseparable. Um, so I could see Sarah making top three. Um, out of those three, I hope Tony wins over Sarah and Michelle. Um, I'd even like Michelle to win over Sarah. I've never really liked Sarah very much. Sorry to all the Sarah fans out there, but she just doesn't appeal to me, and I really don't want her to be the second winner in the history of the show. Please, for the love of God, no. Um, now, one thing that kind of comes into play, um, that CBS, I have to hand, I have to hand it to CBS. They do a really good job staying tight-lipped on Survivor spoilers. There haven't been a lot of seasons in the history of the show that have really been spoiled. Um, one of the reasons, if, if you're a big fan of the show like me, one of the reasons why you don't see Russell very much is because, uh, according to the grapevine, I don't know for sure, I don't know for sure, but this is just in the grapevine, he unleashed some spoilers on the season. Um... I don't know which spoilers, which season he spoiled. Um, I know that uh, if you went looking around Heroes vs. Villains 10 years ago, back in 2010, if you really went looking, you you could have found the Heroes vs. Villains boot list. 
a little bit before the season started. Um, that was pretty well out into the open. I don't know if Russell was um, responsible for that, so don't quote me, but Heroes vs. Villains, the entire boot list, and they even had, they knew Russell was going to be in third, they knew Parvati was um, runner-up, and they had kind of an idea that Sandra was winning. They had, it was perfect all the way down, the entire boot list for Heroes vs. Villains. Um, the next season after that, Nicaragua, the I didn't start seeing boot lists on that on the internet, accurate boot lists for Survivor Nicaragua until they were around down to top five. And honestly, you know, compared to like Bachelorette and other reality shows out there, Survivor spoilers are kind of hard to find. Um, and uh, some Look, sometimes I dabble in spoilers, okay? You know, shoot me. Sometimes I do. And, you know, concrete... A concrete boot list for this season has been really hard to find. However, back in October 8th, 2019, I did find something on what's called the Survivor Sucks forums. Now, with that name, you'd probably think that the website is one thing. And it's not. It's it's not a survive people who don't like Survivor forum. It, it's for Survivor fans, and you know you get on there and you just shoot the shit with people and people that have loved the show since the beginning. Um, I, I like to get on there and dabble, but I'm going to remain anonymous, and I'm not going to tell you who I am. Uh, but. Back in August 8th, 2019, we're going to scooch over here. There were some spoilers dated back in August 2019 of some stuff that was going to happen on the season. Now, we're going to just go through these real quick and see uh, what they got right. Uh, the season is called Winners at War. They got that right. Um, now, they did the tribe breakdowns, and they got the tribes right, but they got the colors wrong. It says here the red tribe was Adam, Ben, Danny, Denise, Ethan, Jeremy, Michelle, Natalie, Parvati, Rob. But if you remember, that was the blue tribe. So they got the, they got the, tr they got the colors wrong, but they got the tribes right. Uh, it says here $2 million prize for the winner of the season. Um, so that was correct. Edge of Extinction is a part of the game, so they got that correct. Uh, multiple loved ones um, for all the contestants, including the ones on EOE. They got they uh, guessed this right, too. Uh, the currency twist is in play. That's the fire tokens, so they, they, they got the fire tokens right. All right, now this is the big one, so listen closely. The final three consists of one man and two women. No other information was confirmed about currently. In theory, it could be any combination at this point. <laughs> All right, so keep that in mind for tomorrow. Keep that in mind for tomorrow. One man, two women. Final three. One man, two women for the final three. All right, well, it doesn't give names, but... So, you know, we're either looking, maybe I'm right, and maybe Tony is the man that makes it in, or, oh my god, I don't like to think about this, maybe Ben makes it in. We'll see. Um, and why I'm only guessing those guys is later down here, it says that a woman comes back from Edge of Extinction. That's the next big one. A woman comes back from Edge of Extinction. So, sorry guys, I mean, most of these, most of these spoilers have been spot on. So, I'm gonna go ahead and say sorry, but sorry to all the Rob fans, and Ethan fans, and Yule fans, and Tyson fans, and Wendell fans, and Nick fans, and Adam fans, but, and Jeremy fans too, I do love Jeremy, I wish, I, I always really like Jeremy, but, doesn't look like any of them are gonna be coming back. So, we'll see if Parvati comes back, or Kim, or Amber, Danny. I'd love to say, I'd love it if Danny came back. Um, you know, 
like I, I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but I, I do like the old schoolers, so I, I would love to see Danny return and just really shake things up somehow. Um, last week they did show that uh, Natalie Anderson bought up a lot of advantages for the uh, challenge tomorrow, um, and some people are kind of worried about they don't, I guess a lot of people don't want another Chris Underwood story where Natalie Anderson, who's just been on edge of extinction this whole time, wins her way back in and then wins the game. We'll see if that happens. Um, so that's just another reason why I'm, it's probably going to be Ben or it's probably going to be Tony. Those are the two men left. Um, and it doesn't look like, I'm going to guess that no men come back from uh, edge of extinction. Um, now there's a question mark next to this spoiler. It says, Ethan seems to be a villain type player this season, but they must have got that wrong because Ethan, a villain? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, but who knows, maybe Ethan comes back from Edge of Extinction and he just becomes this legendary bad guy. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something? I don't know if he has it in him, but that would be something. So, you know, they got some stuff on this list correct, so we have to kind of wait and see till tomorrow how it shakes out. But based on the editing and based on these spoilers, I'm going to say you're looking at Tony and you're looking at uh, Michelle and probably Sarah for the final three. That's going to be my final three. Given if whoever comes back from Edge of Extinction can shake things up, uh, you know, Kim can be very conniving, Parvati can be very conniving, um, Natalie can be very conniving, so depending on who comes back, they could shake things up tomorrow. So it could be interesting, but if you're going to ask me, I'm going to say Tony, Sarah, and Michelle is your final three. And we'll see from there. It's It's been, a, it's been an interesting season. Uh, it's been a fun season. And, uh, you know, it, this one's going to be a little bit bittersweet because I think due to all the COVID stuff, uh, production stopped on season 41 and 42. They were in the middle of getting those seasons together and they had to stop. So I don't know if we're going to be getting any more Survivor this year. Uh, we might just wait until next year, but we'll have to wait and see what Je Jeff says tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, those are my predictions for how... The finale is going to shake out tomorrow, so we'll see if I'm right. We'll see if the spoilers are continue to... <laughs> Excuse me. Wow. We'll continue to see if the spoilers are right. And well, I don't know if I will tomorrow, but maybe Thursday we'll talk, we'll talk about if I was correct or not. All right. You guys stay safe and stay sane out there. And catch you on the flip side. Bye.